Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is very exciting because it's gonna be a 24 hour reading vlog from my hotel room, which I'm just really excited about. Um, I feel like whenever I go somewhere, I'm always like, wow, like what a nice bed in the hotel room. I just wanna lay here all day. But then you never actually do it because you're like, oh, I'm in a new place. I should go explore the new place. But today's actually a day where I'll be doing that <laughs> because it's raining so much in Portland. So today's the one day that I can just like be in this room. Again, it's also raining. So it's like, what else am I gonna do out in the world? <laughs> um, so I'm starting this vlog at 10 a.m. In my last video, the Powell's Bookshop With Me video, I got a bunch of books. Not only did I pick some for myself, but then me and Jess had swapped books. Like we had bought each other books for like Christmas and then swapped them. Um, which was so fun. So I have like 10 books to pick from for this video and I don't know which one to start with. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through the books that I got. I'm not gonna like read through the synopsis again because we talk about them in the vlog I just did. Reprieve, like a social horror novel. I hear it's really, really good. Jess had already read this and so she just brought it for me and it was Migrations, which she says the audiobook for, the audiobook for this is amazing. And I already found the audiobook on Libby. So this is a definite contender and it's also freezing outside. So I feel like this will really hit the mark. Um, this was another book that she brought for me, Once There Were Wolves by the same author. Um, so she said both of them were fantastic. And then the last one in this bag is Beasts of a Little Land. The cover's amazing. The story sounds phenomenal and adventurous and heartbreaking. So this, I mean, the cover, I'm like not kidding. It's amazing. Then I bought myself August at Powell's because we're really into Yellowstone right now. And this is all about like a kid that moves from Michigan to Montana. And when he gets to Montana, it's one of the smallest communities with a bunch of dark secrets. Sounds just like Yellowstone the show, so yeah. And then these three books are the ones that Jess bought me in our gift exchange. The first one is a memoir, I Am, I Am, I Am. And then two short story collections. We have A Manual for Cleaning Women and we have I Hold a Wolf by the Ears. So these are the books that we got. These two she just brought me, but then the other ones are from Powell's. And I think, the one I wanna start with is I Am, I Am, I Am, because my favorite book of the year was Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which is a memoir. And so I wanna read more memoirs in 2022. And so this is a memoir. And also it's pretty short. Like I feel like I'd definitely be able to finish this. I was showing you that the text is pretty big. I feel like I'd definitely be able to finish this in this vlog, so definitely gonna be reading this. This is where I'm gonna start. The first thing I'm gonna do actually is not start reading. I'm actually going to walk to a coffee shop um, called Never Coffee in Portland. We went the other day, oh my God, and the coffee was incredible. <laughs> like, I don't remember the last time I got coffee at a random cafe and was like, this is incredible. I wish I could have it every morning. That's how I felt about Never Coffee. So I'm gonna walk over there. I'm gonna bring I am, I am, I am. I'm gonna order a coffee, oak milk latte with a little bit of vanilla, yes. And then I'm gonna sit down and read some of this. The, the cafe is also like really colorful. So I just feel like this is the perfect little book for Never Coffee. And then <clears throat> the Never Coffee that I'm going to is right, right by Powell's. And so I'm gonna run into Powell's just to buy a mug that I saw there. <laughs> Mark my words, I will not be buying a book when I go to Powell's. I know exactly where the mug is. I, my eyes connected with it once I had already checked out, like once I'd already been rung up. And so I was like, okay, like maybe I'll find a reason to come back here. But I haven't been able to stop thinking about the mug. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm gonna get coffee. I'm gonna read a little bit. I'm gonna go to Powell's to get a mug. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. Okay, let's go get coffee.
from my morning adventures. I went to Never Coffee. I got there around like 10.15 and then I left at like noon. And all I did was read and drink my coffee at the slowest pace I've ever drank coffee before. And it was wonderful. It, I always drink coffee like there's a time limit. <laughs> like I just have to scarf it down as fast as possible. And I never sit at cafes alone, but I was there for like two hours and it was wonderful. I slowed down. I really took in this book. The, the cafe itself is just so pretty. Like there's so many pastel colors and I just think it's so gorgeous there. And it was amazing. I like was just slowly sipping my coffee and had a blast. And this book is incredible. It is fantastic. Whenever I read memoirs, I always go, why don't you write? And not really write a memoir to publish, just more like you have stories, you have memories, you have things that you can put down. Why don't you like start a journal and just like treat it like a memoir through story instead of journal entries? Cause like journal entries never work for me. I always feel like I put so much pressure on myself to write journal entries. But if I treated it like every day, I told a story from my day. I think one of my really good friends has done that, done that in the past. Where like she just picks a moment from her day and then she tells it with like dialogue and details of the day. I thought that could be cool, right? So maybe I'll do that. I have a new notebook that I got for like New Year's and I haven't started writing in it. And I think that might be a cool way to actually like keep up with it is just tell a little story every day. It could be cool. Anyway, uh, I think this is amazing. So far it's phenomenal. I'm over halfway done and I will definitely be finishing it today. And then I went to Powell's. And I don't know if you remember in my last talking clip where I said I wouldn't be buying a book. Mark my words, I will not be buying a book when I go to Powell's. I will not be buying a book when I go to Powell's. Do you remember when I said that? When I said I wouldn't be buying a book. <laughs> because I did and I went against my word, uh, but I had to buy this because I've only heard phenomenal things and it is Night Bitch. I have heard fantastic things about this. So this might be the book that I start reading after I finish I Am, I Am, I Am because it's like a book that the cover is just so intriguing and it's stuck in my head. It's like a loop. It's telling me this needs to be read, so. I give this a read today. Um, and then I did get a mug and I was choosing between two mugs and I went with the one with the dog on it. So cute, so cute. Oh, I love. Anyway, I'm going to order some food or go out to get some food, but I need to figure out lunch because I'm starving. <laughs> so cute mug, great book check in with you very soon. I ordered a sandwich. And then soup. Delicious. Let's see how the sandwich tastes. The sandwich is amazing. <laughs> also, something really cool about this book, at the start of every new story, which is basically every story is about a death, ex a near death experience that Maggie O'Farrell had. Um, so she's had 17 occasions where she stared death in the face and lived to tell the tale. So at the beginning of every tale, there's a different body part that gets a picture, um, which I think is pretty cool, pretty creative and a little artistic, you know? Every chapter you get a new little body part. So really loving it. Anyway, I'm going to finish eating this and eat the soup and then I'll keep reading. <laughs> Hello everyone. 
It is 4 p.m. now and I'm here to give you a reading update. I am nearly done with I am, I am, I am. This is such a good memoir and it's such an interesting memoir, but I think it's gorgeous. The writing I think is really, really good. Um, I wanted to just read one small pack passage and this isn't a spoiler in any way. I mean, it's a memoir, so I don't even know if you could consider any part of this a spoiler. So basically she was really sick as a child and one of her boyfriends say, you were so unlucky. And she disagrees because she thinks she's actually very lucky to still be alive today. And she writes, I consider myself steeped in luck, in good fortune, to have avoided the fate the doctors decreed for me. I have been showered with shamrocks, my pockets filled with rabbit's feet, found the crook of gold at the end of every rainbow. I could not have asked for more from life to have been spared what might have been. I just think that's so beautiful. Like so beautiful, I could be moved to tears. I, I love it. And I also just love like the idea of luck. Like what does it mean to be lucky? And I think this all starts from that, um, that Disney Channel movie, Luck of the Irish, <laughs> when he has that gold coin um, and then his gold coin gets swapped out for a fake gold coin and then he's not lucky anymore. So I've always been intrigued by luck and like good luck and bad luck and like just the superstition around luck. I think it's super cool. So I just thought that was a beautiful passage. Anyway, I'm almost done with this, but I did want to go read down in the lobby of this hotel because there's this really cool like library that they have here. So I'm almost done with this book and I wanted to bring a second book down with me. And I'm really, I'm thinking Night Bitch might be the next book I read in this vlog, but it's pretty long. And I was trying to read like shorter books that I could actually complete by the end of this video. Um, so I'm also intrigued by August. Like this one has something like sinister werewolf motherhood, very cool, very unique. This one has Yellowstone vibes, crime running from the past. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. I think they both have great ratings, so that's not even gonna help me either. <laughs> you know what? I'll bring both down <laughs> and then I'll decide what to read when I'm down there. But um, yes. Okay, I'm gonna go down. Hopefully the fire's going. Get warm and cozy and read. Cool. See ya. a little bit over an hour in the lobby, just hanging out and reading. Um, they have so many books in that, like in the lobby area. And it was so cool. And the fire was going and I was able to read the rest of I Am, I Am, I Am. And immediately teared up so much at the end. I hadn't really teared up at all throughout the entire book. I was just like, this is so intriguing. I'm so interested. The way that this is written is so fantastic. Um, the stories vary in fear and stress and terror. And like, there's just, the ways that she's escaped death have been all over the board. And so 
I was so fascinated. And then the last paragraph happens and obviously I'm not gonna read it to you. And I like felt my heart speeding up in the whole last paragraph. And then the final sentence is just so good. It's so good. Um, and just the whole final chapter is building up to like this huge, stressful, sad ending. Oh my God. And it's just, it was fantastic. Let me just say though, that although I thought this was fantastic and phenomenal, and I think it'll work for a lot of people, um, there are so many content warnings, a lot about physical pain and illness and sickness, uh, miscarriages, uh, physical abuse, attacks, stuff like that. Um, so although the cover looks like very positive and kind of bright and fun, uh, every chapter held something really heavy in it. So I would just be aware of that if you decide to pick it up. So there we go. So as I talked about, I was trying to decide between August and Night Bitch for my next read of this reading vlog and I'm going with Night Bitch. Um, and the real selling point was the fact that it was blurbed by Carmen Maria Machado right here. It says, A Feral Unholy Marriage of Tilly Olson and Kafka. Night Bitch is an incredible feat. Um, and Carmen Maria Machado is one of my all time favorite authors. So if she blurbed it, I gotta know more about it, right? I'm gonna call my best friend now. So I'm gonna take a little pause from reading. Pause, like pause, pause like a wolf. I'm gonna take a pause on reading and then I'll jump into this, but I am, I am, I am. Fantastic start to this reading year. Holy shit. who <laughs> sponsored by bedhead right um anyway hi everyone it's now 10 p.m and what have i done i mean now we're at the official 12 hour mark right i started this at 10 a.m or this video at 10 a.m and here we are at 10 p.m what have we read where am i at in my reading tonight well i'm halfway through night bitch or almost halfway through night bitch more like a third of the way, um, forty percent of the way. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, and it is fascinating. I'm gonna be honest. When I started it, I was a little reluctant to the writing style because it's very stream of consciousness. There's no chapter breaks. It's kind of just like the narrator is just telling the reader, not really breaking it up into like a story structure. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I think the stream of consciousness was just really throwing me off. So I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go. Like, this is a little intimidating. It's, the writing's really good, but like, is it what I'm going for tonight? Um, but I've powered through and I'm now on page 89. I've officially gotten to part two. And again, writing is fascinating. Story is fascinating. Um, and I think that even though I'm really enjoying it right now, I think as a mother, I'm really gonna get so much more out of this book um, because it talks so much about um, guilt of like the guilt you feel as a mother and uh, the loss of self when you become a mother and like, who are you and what are your passions? What are your dreams? Um, the things that you used to find pleasure in kind of fade away because you're focused on being a mother. Um, this is at least this mother's perception and like her experience right now. Um, so, and like 
the joy and the playfulness of playing with your child um, and then the repetitiveness of being a mother and like feeding times and nap times and all this kind of stuff. And anyway, I think it's phenomenal so far. I'm really having such a good time reading it. Um, but it was a little bit of a, had to get into the groove of the writing um, because it feels like the story is being told at you sometimes, unless that you're being told a story, if that makes any sense at all. I hope it does. <laughs> I actually have no clue what's going to happen in any part of this book. <laughs> Everything so far has been a surprise. Um, and again, like just if I told you the synopsis, which is there's a new mother who feels like she's turning into a dog. That's kind of an odd <laughs> synopsis. Um, and yet once you really get into the meat of it, it's a, uh, it's really fascinating and like such an interesting con concept. Uh, I like, I could have never, ever, ever thought of this book concept in my wildest dreams. I think my plan is to try to read as much as possible for the rest of the night, because I'll probably be up for another hour or two. So try to read as much as possible. And then Never Coffee opens tomorrow at 8 a.m. <laughs> so I think I'll be going back there tomorrow morning because it's my last morning that I can get it. And so, I'm gonna get some coffee and try to finish it before 10 a.m. tomorrow because that will be the 24 hour mark in this vlog. So anyway, I'm gonna go back to reading. Just wanted to check in with you and um, I'll let you know how far I get with this tonight before I fall asleep. All right, sounds great. Talk soon. All right, hi everyone. It's me and it is midnight. And I've officially gotten to part dash. There was a part two and then a dash. I don't know why this isn't part three. Just a dash. Um, anyway, I'm over. I think I like only have a fourth left, but um, maybe a third left. I don't know. Uh, but. This is a very strange and unique book. There's some parts where I'm like, holy shit, this is so good. This is so brilliant. This is amazing. And then other parts where I'm just like, how did the author come up with this? This is like, how? How is this in a book? Like, it's just... It's so interesting that this author came up with this. Anyway, that's that's what I've read. And uh, it's time for bed. I need to go to sleep, like, now. I'm gonna brush my teeth, get ready for bed, and go to sleep. But I'll check in with you tomorrow and try to finish this by 10 a.m. for the 24-hour reading vlog. Okay? Good night, angels. Talk to you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is 8.26 and I have just finished Night Bitch and this book was so weird and so fascinating and brilliant. I don't think this is a book for everyone. Um, it is pretty gruesome. There is some violence um, and it's just kind of like odd, but there's so much that's said about womanhood and motherhood. I think this book is getting some attention right now because it is so unique and it is so interesting. And that while I was reading it, I was like, how did someone come up with this book? You know what I mean? So anyway, definitely do some reading up on it. Maybe read some reviews before you pick it up just because I think that it'll really work for some people and not work for other people. Um, thankfully it did work for me, right? First 20 pages, I was a little bit like, maybe not what I wanted right now, but then once pushing through, um, I didn't want to put it down a lot of the time. I was like, 
let's let's figure out how this is gonna end. And I'll actually say that the ending was very cool. It felt like a crescendo to a very interesting book. But anyway, uh, I have an hour and a half left of this reading vlog and I won't be able to finish another book, but I think I'm still gonna go to Never Coffee and I'm gonna bring my copy of Frankenstein with me. Um, this was a book that I already owned um, and I've already read before, but I have to read it for school. And so I brought it with me to Oregon with the intention of like reading it while I was here. And then I got so many good books at Powell's that I was like, never mind. Um, but yeah, I'm like reading it and really trying to annotate it and trying to take in as much as possible um, for my final exam. Yeah. Uh, that'll be the end of the reading, but I'm gonna, gonna go get some coffee, gonna hang out at the cafe, and then I'll check in with you when I get back and let you know, kind of do a wrap up of this reading vlog. So yeah, anyway, gotta head out and yes, okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> see ya. <laughs>and I also read a bit more of Frankenstein. It's interesting because like when you see this cover from afar, you just think I'm reading about a naked man. <laughs> and so like whenever anyone, you know, walked into the cafe, I was like, if they only knew, I don't know why it matters to me, but anyway, I read a bit more and I had actually forgotten my ballpoint pen and so I couldn't actively annotate. I could only really highlight, but I still found so much um, that called out to me. On this time reading, I'm really interested in the ways Frankenstein is, so like Victor Frankenstein, the doctor, is so gripped by anxiety and depression, um, but mainly anxiety, like he exhibits a full on panic attack at some point um, and then goes into a panic induced kind of stupor and living situation uh, for a few months and his friend helps him through it. And I'm just so intrigued by this. Um, I also think like the, <clears throat> this book opens with a quote from Paradise Lost. And then I know that there's allusions to Paradise Lost throughout. And so, you know, obviously I'm not doing the thesis component of my graduate degree. Um, I'm not writing a long paper anymore, but it would have been really cool to write a whole paper on comparing uh, Paradise Lost to Frankenstein and like the creation of life and death and like, you know, kind of eating from the tree of knowledge, which is what Frankenstein does. He kind of um, is so enamored with knowledge and learning and then he creates and he you know, he does the unthinkable, which is reanimating a corpse, and then he spirals into huge depression, anxiety, and regret, which is a lot of what Eve and Adam go through in Paradise Lost. So <clears throat> anyway, I have been really, really enjoying this reread. I'm liking it a lot more the second time I'm reading this. Um, I really liked it the first time, but I remember just thinking like, this is like all going over my head. I'm not really understanding what's going on. There's a lot of science. Um, but now that I know what to expect, I'm really leaning into these passages on Frankenstein's anxiety and depression and insecurities as a scientist and as an academic. So anyway, really enjoying it. And Let's do a bit of a roundup, right? So started this vlog yesterday at 10 a.m. 
and I was able to finish Night Bitch, which was intriguing and fascinating and unlike any book I've ever read, um, the only one that comes into thought is Bunny. And even then, Bunny is so different than Night Bitch. Um, and I didn't really like Bunny. The first time I, like, when I first read it, I was like, that was so intriguing. And then after time's gone on, I'm just like, actually, that, that book didn't really work for me. But this book really worked for me. Um, it's just, I know it's not gonna work for everyone. So it's like hard for me to like say, everyone should read this because I think you have to be ready for it and you have to know what's coming and um so kind of stream of consciousness animalistic woman becoming a dog through her role as a mother um and just like what that means so it was fascinating but extremely weird and so just be aware of that if you decide to read that and then i'd also started and finished i am i am i am which was such a start to 2022. <laughs> this was such a good memoir, but definitely not. I mean, despite the bright color and the golden um, feather, it is not, um, you know, it's not, it's not super joyful and super happy. There are definitely moments of that, but it's really going through like these really critical moments in the author's life. Um, but it definitely made me just want to read all of her work because if her memoir writing is anything like her fictional writing, I can't wait to jump in and really explore. These are the two full reads. And then I got a few more chapters of Frankenstein done. Um, but yeah, this was such a fun vlog. I hope this was a fun vlog to watch. Let me know what you'd like to see in the next vlog or the next video. Hope you liked this video. Hope you had fun and hope to see you in the next one.